takes to build and restore a house? Do you want to work alongside the pros? From carpentry to plumbing, landscaping, and masonry, we'll show you the tricks of the trades on This Old House Trade School, sponsored by Home Advisor. For the past few weeks, we have been picking apart the house, and quite honestly, well, it's looking a little sad. You can see that we have stripped all of the clapboards off the front of the house. We've taken out all the windows, too. Those are just storms covering up the openings. And we've even completely removed the front porch. So the house isn't looking its best, but there is hope because we have started to rebuild. Last time we were here, we were pouring the foundation for a new addition. This is one of two that we're putting on the house. And Tommy, you've been busy. you got the side walls up, and uh, you guys are moving along. Yeah, we're going right along, Kevin. We're actually uh, building the new side entry. And you can see right here, this is what you're looking at. We have the walls, the front door is going to go right there, and a window to the half bath. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some storage shelves in there. Okay. And on top of that, it's going to set a gable roof with a shed roof right beside it. So you actually got two little roofs right there. Right. So what we need to do today is we're going to frame this gable roof, get it sheathed, and hopefully get this shed roof on at the same time. All right. But before we get started, we have to cut open that wall inside to insert this carrying beam right here. All right, let's get to it. Okay, now before we remove this wall, we've temporarily braced the roof in a couple of studs. And the next thing we need to do is remove this piece of roof that's been cut away. So let me get a ladder and we can get up here and take it down. the wall that we're going to insert it in which is five and a half inches that means three two by tens and one filler strip okay now we're going to insert it in the wall drop your end down kevin i'm going to pass this one up to joe get on the other side of those wires give it a quick push one two three yeah, all right that's it all right now take go ahead okay good all right this jack Tap that with a sledgehammer. All right, slide it in a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. All right. That's good. I'm going to nail it. Alternative to a traditional hand trowel, some gardeners prefer to use a more specialized tool called a soil or hori hori knife. Hori means to dig in Japanese. This tool is serrated on one edge to cut roots and score plants. It's also marked with soil depth to aid in planting bulbs at the optimal distance below the surface. We'll be All right, we're now ready to frame the gable end right here for our new addition. And I want to match the pitch of the existing building. Which is what? That's called a 7 and 12, which means for every 12 inches that we come in from the outside wall, the rafter goes up 7 inches. All right. I've done this here. I've also cut the length of our rafter and our seat to fit right here. And the length is cut to allow for the thickness of our ridge. Do you want to toenail that in there? All right. You want to toenail it up a little high because you don't want to split it. So a little bit up. There you go. Good. Now we'll set the other side. All right, now take that piece of two by four and you're going to hold it right between the two rafters once I hold this one up there. That's our spacing that we're going to need for our ridge. So the ridge is going to be a double? That's right. Double LVL. 
All right, now we're ready to set the ridge pole. Slide that up, that's good. All right, now, let me place this right on our center line that I have down here over our header. Toenail this in place. Now I'm gonna put the studs in on the gable end. I've already pre-cut those. an inch and three quarters by nine and three quarters LVL. So this is going to be what, one of two that we're using? We're going to use two and when we nail the two LVLs together it'll make up a nice strong beam. It's a lot easier to pick up one and two at a time. Got it? Come on in. Pull that rafter up Joe. All right. Tap it. You have a sledgehammer? Yeah. Let it fall as it goes Joe. Pick up your rafter. All right, make them flush. I want to just check that with a level, just make sure it's right. Yeah, it's still good, Plum. Okay, now we got to nail the two LVLs together, and that will make up a beam. Now all we have to do is set the rafters. Now we're ready to infill this section of the roof right here. We're going to use these right here. These are called valley rafters. The top is cut to the pitch to go to the ridge. The bottom is cut to the pitch and the slope of the roof here. So we have the slope cut here. Now this will sit at the ridge, get nailed. And it's following the slope and the pitch of the roof right here and I'll slide it down onto my nailer. Okay, now I move up and get the next one in place. Okay. All right, now I'm near the bottom. And we'll go to the other side. All right, that's it for the rafters. Now we have to sheathe it. last piece in I also want to allow for a 10 inch overhang to tie to the overhang uh, into the roof. Tools back at the Capital Construction store for me. That's right, Capital Construction. Right, this roof is all framed Dave and sheeted. Dave Bastos, the owner of Capital Construction, Here's stole all of my tools. What does a terrazzo worker do? I should a, sue him for creates it. creates decorative walkways, floors, patios, and panels. B, carves wooden rails and fireplace they did me wrong. They C, stole my tools. C, around decks and patios. I or D, builds for, terraces for, for my farming. business. Stay tuned for the answer. Workers are also called terrazzo masons. Terrazzo is a flooring material consisting of chips of marble or granite set in concrete and polished to give a smooth surface. Out back, we are building a family room addition, and you can see that the foundation is already set. But before we start framing up on top of this foundation, we've got a little bit of patchwork to do, some masonry work. Now, this big chimney right here, our mason, Mark McCullough, actually cut off this right side because the wall for the addition is going to come right in here to the old house. You can see that he's cut it away and started patching with some block right here because we're not going to see this side of the chimney. But, Mark, right here, we are going to see all of this, so I guess the patch process is a little different. That's right. We have to take all this nasty stuff out. We're going to sawtooth this edge, and we're going to start with a hammer and chisel right now. All right, let me back off. Put some glasses on and... Oh yeah, you are just going to whack it. I see you running into some solid stuff right here, so I think we're going to get the saw. Alright. Alright, Kevin, we got the big saw, diamond blade, wet saw, but you'll see me take the saw into these joints and I'm going to override this brick. That'll be part of the sawtoothing procedure that we're going to go into. So, here we go, guys. Peggy thinks I don't know how to, she thinks I do not know how to do any of that. 
But that, that saw made a big difference, Just didn't it? because she doesn't did. know how to do it. She thinks I don't know how to do it. She falsely accused me of knowing everything. Okay, Kevin, the next That's step true. is going to be a sawtooth knees break right here. All that is, is we're going to take out the half, take out the half, take out the half. And I once we weave this work back stuff. in, it'll all I look like it was new. All right, so how stuff. are we going to get these halves out? I, I see you know saw in your hand. We're going to take the, the saw and do, do the know bed joint. And then we're going to take a new tool called the double blade bypass saw. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take care of these head joints. Each all right. individual contractor type of person knows, but I know a lot of stuff when it comes to construction and carpentry and masonry and electrical and HVAC and plumbing and I've got about 30 to 35 plus years experience in construction and carpentry work because I've got my own business. Okay, Kevin, now it's time I've got my own chisel. business. And we'll take these halves out of here so we can do our sergeant and weave. Capital Construction. Oh, that's from Cincinnati, nice. Ohio. That worked out well. Owned by Dave Fastel. Stole my tools. Stole my stuff. Alright, well you can see why they call it a sawtooth, right? You can have to weave them right in here. That's right, Kevin. That's exactly what we want. Alright. Okay, that one's good. All right, Kevin, as you can see, we put up a two by four, which we're using as a story pole. You've got a red mark here for each course of the brick going down, and you start off with a string line. That's right. Each red line is gonna mimic the joint on the other side of the chimney. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a line over here. We're gonna string it across. That's gonna give us our level mark. Beautiful. All through the course. Kevin, what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna spread the line with mortar all the way through. And as I get up, I'm going to do what we call furrowing the mortar. And what does that do for us? As you can see, it kind of pooges out the mortar to left and right, which will give us a nice bed as we bring this brick in. We're going to give it a little wiggle. As you can see, the heel see, of my hand is on the brick see, that I laid before. I knew, I knew exactly how to do that. What I've done with the last brick. I knew so it helps exactly you set your how height to do that. Even. But That's right. And then the string when you, when you're is what really helps me out. Bricks that are already in, then, in place and you're making sure that you get plenty of mortar between to those two bricks that's right you can see the head joint i like to make my head joints stuff. nice and full yeah sometimes not, if they're not full perfect place for water easy as what this that course is down is so what i'm going to do right now is pick up my string and line it up with the next course you'll do the same that. the next hash mark good way, now we are going to use how our to do stuff. sawtoothing procedure Again, we want to really slam the mortar in here at that head joint. It's an awkward position to lay that sawtooth. But I know exactly what I'm doing. They seem to think I don't know what I'm doing. Down. A little tap. I know exactly what Open I'm doing. In. Just weave it right in. Weave it right in. And, and it's highly offensive. Okay, Kevin, now we're going to do just what we just I did. Get, we I spread the line with mortar. It hurts me. It, it really offends me when they Let's say. Let's see that mortar come off your trial. Now we're gonna fire back. I know what I'm doing. A little scrape. What he's doing, I know exactly how to do that. My brick. Again, never ignore the head joint. Whether I want him to do it or not. Wiggle down into position. Scrape back. My, my joint is very good. I'm just gonna put it off this brick. Used to do and stuff I am going like to continue that on before he drove up. Just like this. Great. All so right. Thanks. All right. Good luck. To hold Coming up next, flyers. you shall hold the mantle for the oldest this old house we've ever done. All right. But first, here's a tip. The terms hard and soft wood can be deceiving because the labels have little to do with how hard or heavy the wood actually is. Hardwood comes from trees that are deciduous or lose all of their leaves. Softwood comes from evergreen or coniferous trees that keep their leaves my all year long. Softwoods are often used for framing dad. or projects that will be painted. Hardwoods are more often used for Girl furniture, trim, and decoration. About all that stuff. 
Several years ago, we added on to another 18th century home that is still the oldest this old house project to date. So the other day, Norm stopped by to see how the house and the addition are holding up. Well, Terry, we just started working on another 18th century house, very similar to yours. And when we first arrived, we were told that it was built in the late 1600s. But after some experts looked at it, they told us it was built no earlier than 1720. So you still hold the mantle for the oldest this old house we've ever done. All right, we're all right. We're still in the perch. So that's great. So this was the original house, a two-story house with the center entrance. And a lot of our work happened over here. This is all new. Tommy built this. Two stories, kitchen, family room on the first floor, and your master bedroom suite on the second floor. And we did run into some structural issues on the main house. We fixed those. We stripped off all the clapboards the because uh, they had lead paint. And it looks like everything's holding up pretty well with the new clapboards. And you kept the this pumpkin episode. color. You know, we've only painted it once oh, in 17 great. years, and uh, nothing else have we touched. All right, new windows. And, of course, I spent some time in the workshop building you a new front entrance. The, the day that went up, that was one of the best days on the project. All right. What's it look like well, inside? Let me show you. Ah, now this brings back some memories. Uh, yes, indeed. The out of plumb front wall, which leans in several inches. <laughs> the low ceilings, the out of level beams, and this yeah. great big fireplace. Isn't that terrific? We use it all the time. Yeah. Well, oh, you know, when we started big, looking big at this fireplace. project, we decided you were gonna have to leave the out of level, like leave the out of plumb. Let sleeping dogs lie. Twice Otherwise, you're never gonna get that addition. We let a lot of them lie, didn't we? Sure did, including this floor, which just goes <laughs> up and down. Your step. It's like the oh, ocean. I don't think I've seen anything like it since. Here's where the new work begins to tie in. Didn't. Remember, the kitchen was over here, weeks. right? Right here. Yep. And then uh, this original the panel, right? Like you like save this. And we actually months. started some pretty serious renovations of this section of the old house because the back wall was structurally compromised. So Tom had to shore up the second floor. We tore out the wall all the way through the corner of the house, mm -hmm. reframed it, and then built you the stair to the second floor. Yeah, this is the one we use all the time. We don't use the front staircase any longer, almost right. at all. So you got a closet under the it's stair really and a powder room beyond. I love that. And the addition starts place. right here. Mm -hmm. And you got a great space. I mean, a nice, big, I've open space. It's great, yeah. and we really like it as a design like statement. It still holds up, we think. Right, and it's really two separate areas, areas but they're it. open. You yeah, got this nice seating area here. Like right, we're going to spend all our time either here or there for the most part. One thing I will say is this is underpowered from a lighting standpoint. I wish we had some more lighting in this room. All right, so maybe a few more recessed light fixtures. And I love these wide pine floors. Hey, Seema. Hey, Norm. And I know you really fought for these floors. I did, and I'm still so glad that I did because I feel it was the key element that just brought the whole project together, and it has, you know, married the old house with the new park. Well, they look pretty good. Any maintenance issues? Well, we've never sanded re completely, but I do some spot touch-ups here and there. Mm -hmm. well, I think they've held yeah. up pretty well. And I love your kitchen. I mean, I love cherry cabinets to start out with. And yeah, I think naturally finished cabinets hold up better than painted cabinets. Well, they sure have. Building with three cabinets. kids growing up, now With gone. restoring you know, cabinetry. It, and it looks like new. It does. You still have your stainless steel cooktop. That's, cabinets, that's timeless. I still love cabinets. it. And the six burners, yeah. And I was surprised, we were all surprised, when you selected high-pressure landing countertops. Well, you know, I grew up with it, and I just, I had this nostalgia for like it, said, and I wanted it. I and when Tommy suggested the wood banding that would give it a more classic look, I just said, that's it. Mm -hmm. And you picked a nice and neutral color. Yep, and the, the material you know, is really holding up well. It is. Would you change anything in the kitchen? About well, I do have large and groups and here frequently, and one dishwasher doesn't quite do it. I'd love another, although Terry is a pretty good set. I got a hand washer. Would you like another power yeah. washer? <laughs> okay. I tell you, Norm, one thing that I wish I had uh, fought but for is a fireplace over here. We've got a nice painting with a wall washer, but I wish I'd held out for the fireplace. Well, you know, it looks Just great, like and I think the reason it looks great 30, is that the choices you made 30, are timeless. 30, 30, I mean, it looks as good today as it did 17 yeah, years ago. Really and it was great to work with you guys during the whole process. So you still love us? Yeah. We still yeah. love you. All right. Well, thanks for the <laughs> tour. Day, You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Closed captioning provided by... Damn it. When you 